Hello everybody, my name is Jennifer Squires and here we make paint creates so and have fun. So today I'm going to try my hand at making it my own silicone mould and I'm going to make a mould for this piece here to use as part of my Viking apron dress. So I'm going to bring you down and we're going to switch to voiceover and figure this out somehow. Hi everybody, voiceover Jennifer here. I'm nasally, I have a cold, but what I'm doing here is I'm cutting up a plastic cup and I'm going to hot glue it to a Pringles lid to make my mould for my silicone. I do not use enough hot glue and I even tried, once I realised it was leaking, put a bunch of tape around it. It didn't work, it leaked everywhere, but it did not leak so much enough silicone stayed in the mold for the mold to actually set and form but the reason I'm doing this project this apron dress is because I took an ancestry DNA test and we found out that I was like super duper Scottish something ridiculous like 86 or so percent followed by like six or eight percent Scandinavian I'll link the video in the description but from this video I got an email saying oh this person is really closely related to you like would be my father's first cousin and I thought you know how can this be the story um I found out when my parents divorced that my father was adopted and the story he chose to tell was that it was like an in-family adoption like his what well, who we thought might have been his auntie was actually his mother and she got pregnant out of wedlock and you know so his her older sister and husband adopted my dad that's what we thought happened but that's not what happened at all and through this DNA test we found what would be my father's first cousin and from that we have me and this person we've been emailing back and forth um, have found that it's now one of seven brothers um, that would be my father's biological father my grandfather so everybody's excited and it's kind of like a mystery who done it we haven't I don't actually know if one any of these seven brothers are living or not because it would put them between like 65 up plus years but you know so it's a mystery and it's you know when we find out we find out and I'll update y'all okay it's the next day it's firm to the touch but it's still kind of sticky it's like it's not leaving residue on my fingers but it's kind of leaving um, a fingerprint on the mold Now this doesn't cure very well when it gets cold and it is getting quite cold at the moment like last night it was six degrees C I'll put the right here whatever it was in Fahrenheit and this takes I think eight hours at 65 degrees Fahrenheit so I'm just going to pop it up on the windowsill and as it warms through the day and the sun shines on it then it should cure further and I will unmold it this afternoon I did learn that the plasticine that I used may have sulfur in it and sulfur makes silicone not cure so if it doesn't work I have enough to try again Okay, it's after lunch. I'm going to unmold it now. It's been 24 hours, and if it hasn't set by now, it's not going to. So we're gonna see what we've got. It took me absolute ages to get this out of the mold. What you're seeing is something sped up by. 18 times so here is the mold it picked up a lot of detail from the original piece but a lot of it is quite sticky but I'm gonna leave it in the Sun maybe that'll do something it doesn't maybe it doesn't not do anything at all but my next idea is to um not use this plasticine maybe to use see this is leaving a shiny 
sticky residue on my fingers. I'm going to try maybe filling it with sticky tape and hot glue and trying again. So here's my thought process. I've stuck this under the UV lamp for science. Um, the UV lamp generates a small amount of heat. Maybe that heat might help it cure the rest of the way. If not, you know, we're learning, we're experimenting. My next thought is I've got some tape. This is all cleaned out. I'm going to cover this bottom part here with tape and then just fill it with glue and attach it to the bottom of another piece of plastic and try and build another mold. This time I am using painter's tape, cutting it to vaguely circle shaped and making sure I really press it into all the crooks and nannies and then just filling, absolutely filling it chockers with hot glue before I stick it down on the Pringles lid so that it is in no way the silicone going to press by the weight of it through the, the um, little twisty parts of the thing we're making a mold of so that the silicone won't escape through and just give us something completely wackadoo. I'm also making the mold the same way as I did before because that part seemed to work except this time I am just using a butt ton of hot glue and then tape just lots of tape all the tape many different kinds of tape it still leaks but no way near as much as it leaked last time The thing I did this differently this time as to last time when I mixed up the silicone is I had already dyed the two different parts of silicone with a red and a blue alcohol ink so I could actually see when it was fully mixed because when I was mixing it the first time both part A and part B were exactly the same colour and it was so hard to tell when it was fully mixed. It's the following day again and we're going to try and unmold this and hope that it works. If I thought last time it took me forever to get it out of the mold, it took forever, actually forever this time. It's sped up to like 24 times speed. It took so long because it's set really nicely it actually formed like a suction against the Pringle lid so it was really hard to get it out. This worked for the most part. It's just a lot of trimming I'm going to have to do. You see all of these little sticking up bits right here. I'm going to have to go through and, and just trim those. Okay, 
Okay, here's our mold. It's all trimmed. I got all of the little pieces out. It has picked up the detail of this piece quite well. So the next step is to cast some epoxy resin into this and then see how close we get to this. So this is the first mold that um, we made and this is the second one. With this one, I don't know how well you can see but it's very if it didn't sit you can see the um the silicone on the popsicle stick whereas this one it's nothing beautifully set nothing sticky so we are going to make something in here and see if it turns out looking slightly like this. It won't be transparent. You won't be able to see it through. It'll be a solid piece, but we're hoping. So we're going to mix up some resin. Get some gloves on. And I always have an excess mold. So if I have excess resin, I have a mould to dump it into. Put that off to the side. Got the respirator and we're going to get to it. I skipped me mixing up the resin in this particular video because by now you've seen me do it enough to know that you mix part A with part B, mix it for five minutes, let it sit for five minutes, so the bubbles come to the top, add colour, and so on. So I went with my Everything Mica, which is all of the micas I have mixed together, and it gives this kind of brownish, pewtery, silvery, metallic finish, and when you look really closely at it, it's got some different can kind of see the flecks of like gold and all the different colors in there so I thought this would be a really good thing that would kind of give off the Viking vibe Okay, so it's the next day. This has set overnight. I haven't brushed my hair or anything because I was too excited. I really want to see how this turns out and if it bears any resemblance to this piece here. Obviously it won't be... It's also the first day of school holidays. It um won't be see-through. It'll be a solid piece, but let's have a look. That is our resin casting, and that is our original piece. So here. And I'm not even going to bother trying to fill these gaps here, because I think that if this was an actual Viking pen for an apron dress that there would be imperfections in the metal casting process but this this is so cool so I'm gonna make a couple more of these for my Viking apron dress I think I might go with a deep brass color this is just a test piece okay this this is just part one of this Viking video. The second part will be actually making the clothing itself. 
um, so I'll be making the smock, the um, the dress itself, and then the apron dress that goes over top, and that's where these little pins will come into. I'm gonna go for a deep brass color for these, and I'm not gonna bother trying to fix the gaps because I think that there would be imperfections in the metal casting process, given the the technology knowledge that they had at the time. So yeah, that, that's my little Viking tablet pin silicone mold making experiment journey. Please like this video, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, thumbs up, thumbs down, and we'll see you next time.